One year after a New York City firefighter fell to his death while responding to an accident on the Mill Basin Bridge, the city is taking steps to make sure he is not forgotten. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio and FDNY Commissioner Daniel Nigro are in Rockaway Park where a plaque dedication ceremony is being held to honor the New York City hero who paid the supreme sacrifice. Let's listen in. There, oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the To invite Monsignor John Dallin to do the invocation. Detail, hot call. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather here today as one family to pray for, to honor, to remember, and dedicate a plaque. To Stephen Pollard. As we come here, remember he came as a person of service. He's a man who learned somewhere in his life that the scripture talks about if we, we wish to be first, we must learn to serve others. And he learned that he had to be a servant. And he came here to live that out. He also learned that it says in scriptures, no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for one's friends. So we come here today and we dedicate this plaque in his memory. We pray for his family who is with us today, who spent a year remembering, grieving, and praying for him. I hope, Lord, they also took time to remember the good times they shared with Stephen in their lives. We pray for the company that's here today, those who worked with him, that they will continue to keep his memory alive here in this house. And they'll always pass on the story of Stephen to those who come here in the future. We pray for the people of this community who are recipients of the gift that this firehouse is and the gift that Stephen was for them, the time he was here. We pray today for all in the fire department who are ill, especially those who are sick from the World Trade Center, that the world will reach out his healing hands. And we pray for all firefighters who are working today and lead them safely home to their families tonight. As always, we ask this as your loving children, amen. Rico. Everyone, please be seated. Good morning. My name is Captain Jimmy Quinn of Ladder 170. I want to thank everyone for being here today for plaque dedication, honoring former member Stephen Pollard, lost to us on January 6, 2019. I would, like, I would now like to introduce the members of our dais. The Mayor of the City of New York, Bill de Blasio. Fire Commissioner Daniel Nigro. Chief of Department, John Sugnick. First Deputy Commissioner, Laura Cavanaugh. Chief of Fire Operations, Thomas Richardson. Please hold your applause for the remaining members while all members are announced. Chief of EMS Operations, Lillian Bonsignori. Chief of Fire Investigation, Thomas Kane. Assistant Chief of Fire Operations, John Hodgins. Brooklyn Borough Commander, 
Joseph Ferrante, Manhattan Borough Commander, Michael Lagello, Deputy Assistant Chief of Fire Operations, Richard Vladis, Deputy Assistant Chief of Fire Prevention, Kevin Brennan, Deputy Assistant Chief of Fire Prevention, Michael Durkin, Chief of EMS Academy, Cesar Escobar, Deputy Assistant of Fire Operations, Michael Gala, Chief of the Fire Academy, Brendan McSweeney, Chief of Safety, Michael Myers, Queensboro Commander, Freddie Schaff, Chief of Planning, Fred Villa, Villa, Villani, Staten Island Borough Commander, Kevin Woods, Chief of Uniform Personnel, Michael Masucci, 15th Division Commander, Stephen Morrow, Battalion 5A Commander, Brian Foley, Assistant Commissioner of Family Assistance, Evelyn Tesorero, Captain of Engine 257, Charlie Brady, President of the UFOA, Jake Lamanda, President of the UFA, Gerard, Gerard Fitzgerald, Brooklyn uh, Trustee, John Kelly, and FDNY Chaplain, Monsignor John Dellendick. I would also like to welcome New York State Senator Roxanne Persuad. We are especially honored to have members of Stephen's family. His mom, Janet, his dad, retired firefighter Ray Pollard Sr., brother Ray Pollard Jr. of Ladder 114, sister-in-law Nicole, and girlfriend Brianna. Uh, as well as a number of member, family members and close personal friends. <laughs> We'd also like to welcome the Executive Officer of Brooklyn Borough, uh, a patrol of uh, Brooklyn Borough South, Chief Timothy Bouget. Commanding Officer of NYPD Highway Patrol, Inspector Steve DeLisi. And Highway, uh, NYPD Highway Patrol, Lieutenant Peter Moy. I'm honored to introduce the first speaker, Mayor Bill de Blasio. Thank you, Captain. It is an honor to be at Ladder 170, but we're here with a heavy heart. And today, all of you in this house are honoring one of your own. One year ago, made the ultimate sacrifice on behalf of all of us. Firefighter Stephen Pollard means a lot to people in this house, means a lot to all the members of the FDNY, and especially to his own family who remember him, grieve him, keep him in their hearts. The FDNY family is hurting again today. The Pollard family is hurting so deeply. His dad, his brother, his mom, his girlfriend, all the family members who are here, Ray, Ray Jr., Janet, Brianna, all the family. We all try to stand by you on occasions like this, and we know we can never do it perfectly. But everyone here cares. Everyone here wants you to know that we'll be with you for the long haul. Everyone here wants you to know that Stephen means something to all of us and will continue to. I want to thank all the leadership of the FDNY, Commissioner Nigro, First Deputy Commissioner Kavanaugh, Chief Sudnick, all the leaders up here, the elected officials, thank you, Senator, for joining us, the union leadership. Everyone is here in common cause today. And we do not pretend that this gathering will make the pain go away, particularly for the Pollard family. But we do, by gathering, honor a great man. And we do, by gathering, honor this family for the strength they've shown. What they've gone through is very, very hard for the rest of us to imagine. 
but they've shown strength. They've shown what a good family they are. When we put a plaque up, it's a very purposeful act. It means something. In a city of 8.6 million people, the greatest city on earth, it means that the person we honor did something of consequence, even in the illustrious history of this department, the illustrious history of this city, Stephen Pollard did something above and beyond. And he needs to be remembered in the history of this city. The plaque is to honor what made him extraordinary. And it is not just his sacrifice, it's what led him to be a member of this department to begin with, and what kind of man he was, and what kind of firefighter he was. I've heard over time many stories, two, two ideas, two themes keep coming through. One, Stephen was a man of compassion. He could meet a stranger in their moment of greatest need and feel for them and be there to help and reach out that hand and be that savior. That's who he was in his heart. And the second thing I heard was about his strength in every sense of the word. Not only his physical strength, although I do note he got the nickname Captain America, that tells you something. The physical strength for sure, but the personal strength, the human strength, the strength to act on that compassion, the strength to put himself forward when others wouldn't even know how. That is the caliber of man we honor. And this was him throughout his life. It was his childhood dream to join this department. And he showed it at the academy where he excelled. And he showed it in his career, and it was way too short. But what he did, he did right, and what he did touched the lives of so many people, his fellow firefighters and all the people he protected. So the plaque is for all of us to recognize what he means and that his memory must be understood and remembered by this whole city and honored. But the plaque is what you see on the outside. The plaque is the, the physical monument. There's something else we can do, which is to carry Stephen in our hearts to remember his example, to do our best to be as brave as he was, as strong as he was, as compassionate as he was. On behalf of 8.6 million New Yorkers, I say to the Pollard family, God bless you all, and we will stand by you. And to all the members of the FDNY, God bless you for all you do. The city is grateful. On days like this, it becomes even clearer how deep that gratitude must be. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor de Blasio. I'd like to invite our next speaker up, FDNY Commissioner Daniel Nagro. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Mayor, for those kind words. One year ago today, we tragically lost a courageous young man who was truly everything we look for in a New York City firefighter. Stephen Pollard made the supreme sacrifice after just a year and a half on the job. But in that time, this young man dedicated every single moment to learning, serving, training, and to helping others. Without question, this was a job he was born to do, and it was also a job he loved. That's in large part because protecting life and property was in Stephen's DNA. He completed the long and difficult training required to become a New York City firefighter, following in the footsteps of both his father and brother. Stephen exemplified all of the extraordinary qualities of a firefighter. He was professional, smart, 
determined, humble, and above all, he was brave. He excelled at our fire academy. His dream of becoming a firefighter since he was a young boy drove him to do his absolute best. And in the short time Stephen spent in this firehouse, he made a lasting impression on his fellow members. He distinguished himself through his character and work ethic, learning all that he could to become a better firefighter and letting his actions speak for him. He worked hard at every task and was happy to be here every single tour. Stephen was committed to training so he could hone his skills and save lives. In challenging and dangerous moments, Stephen exemplified leadership qualities far beyond his years. And all of you here were lucky to have worked with him. You knew he was special, and you could see that he was destined to be an important part of this firehouse for years to come. A tragic accident took his life. In his final moments, he was going to help others, responding to a car accident, responding because someone needed help. Stephen was a brave young man who was totally focused on living a life of service. He knew he could make a difference in people's lives. He stood out amongst his peers. He was an extraordinary young man, and that's how he will always be remembered. Today, with this plaque we dedicate in his name, we're honoring Stephen's memory and ensuring he will always be a part of this firehouse. To Stephen's parents, Janet and Ray, and his brother Ray, know that this department will never forget the sacrifice your family has made. This firehouse and the entire department will always be here for this family. May God bless Stephen Pollard, and may God continue to bless the New York City Fire Department. Thank you, Commissioner. I'd like to invite our next speaker, Chief of the Department, John Sudnick. Good morning, and welcome once again to Ray, Janet, and Ray, and the entire Pollard family. Thank you all for being with us today for this ceremony to remember Stephen. We'd also like to thank the officers and members of Engine 257 Ladder 170 and Battalion 58 for your efforts getting the firehouse ready for today and for your unwavering support for the Pollard family this past year. On these solemn occasions, when our department witnesses the outpouring of love and support for our families and for each other, it, re it renews our commitment and dedication to our mission. When a probie first comes to the firehouse, there always seems to be a new sense of anticipation and excitement with additional emphasis placed on training, teamwork, and character building. And the eagerness and diligence that probies bring with them from the academy is contagious, so the members are all in. When Stephen came to Ladder 170, it didn't take long for the officers and members of Canarsie's Bravest to find out what he would bring to this company and learn what he was all about. He excelled in Proby School and graduated with outstanding marks, so it came as no surprise that he had an immediate impact in the firehouse and on the fire ground. He always dreamed of becoming a New York City firefighter, and even though he came from a firefighting family, he was here to make his own mark, and right from the start, he did. The company officers here knew very early on that he was really something special. They saw that he possessed the quintessential qualities of an eventual leader in 170 truck. He was eager and aggressive, dedicated and polished, a true professional. He quietly went about his business, and he did it extremely well. Simply put, every member here knew that any company on this job would be all the better if they had Stephen Pollard on their roster. And to their great fortune, he was on theirs. This has been a very painful year for everyone, 
and I understand that today's ceremony may not make things any easier. But it's our hope that with this dedication ceremony today, the Pollard family and the members of this firehouse can find some solace in our remembrance. Please know that these plaque dedications are so important and have so much significance for our FDNY family. Today's ceremony is how we pay tribute to our fallen brother, how we make certain that his dedication, his service, and above all, his sacrifice lives on forever. We acknowledge once more that his chosen profession and his calling in life was a noble one. It reminds us all just how dangerous our job really is and reaffirms our own commitment to it. This plaque will forever remain on the wall of this firehouse as a lasting tribute to a brave and selfless firefighter who gave his life so others may live. It will serve as a permanent memorial and a constant reminder that his memory will always be with us and his family will always be with us. It is our promise to Stephen and our vow to his family that he will never be forgotten. I'd like to once again thank all the members of Canarsie's Bravest for their efforts and would especially like to thank the Pollard family for joining us today to pay tribute to Stephen. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Sovnik. Next, I'd like to invite up UFA President Gerard Fitzgerald to say a few words. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first, I would like to recognize Engine 257, Ladder 170. From the first moment of this tragedy, you all have stood tall. You should all be very, very proud, very proud. Walking into the firehouse today, I couldn't but see the wall, this, uh, this tribute that you have built in honor of all the loss that you've had over the years. It's tremendous. The house looks great. Again, you guys should be very proud. Each and every one of these plaque dedications is heartbreaking, but today's for Firefighter Pollard is particularly gut-wrenching for me, for the members of this department, and unimaginably for the members of his family. So before I continue with these remarks, please allow me to offer my sincerest condolences to his loved ones and all the members of the firehouse, past and present. A year has passed since Steve's tragic, untimely death. It doesn't seem like a year. All members of the department mourn with you and stand with you as you overcome this grief. Firefighter Pollard was an ambitious and dedicated young man who yearned to make a difference in his community. This was evident by his commitment to his firehouse and the community that he served. While he was not always very outspoken, he led by example, putting his worth that ethic into his job and into his efforts to serve the public. He was reliable and he never shied away from obstacles. He was rising fast despite his less than two years on the job. This came not only from his efforts and training, but his life in a family of firefighters. Coming from the Pollard family, which is a storied legacy of service, with his dad, Ray, serving more than 30 years, I think 32, his brother, Ray, who remains in fire, firefighter and ladder company 114. Steve had a profound impact on the Brooklyn community. This terrible loss is felt every single day by his community and the neighborhood he grew up in and lived in in Marine Park. All of us know that when we take the test and as we get hired, you're on the list, and as, as each one of us get hired, you recognize guys from the neighborhood, and we're all very happy for each other. In my time in Brooklyn, there was a lot more of us that used to get hired. The community was, you know, the, the neighborhoods were bigger. But these young guys from the Marine Park and maybe a little further out all knew each other pretty much personally. It was hard to watch them mourn the loss of their friend that night. It's still hard to watch them. But it's also gives me solace seeing how they work hard to remember Steve, showing up to the different events in his name and talking about him and celebrating his life. 
I know that they will continue to do this. Steve will continue to have his impact in the form of, on, in the form of us honoring his legacy and his memory and living in his shadow. We, rem we will remember firefighter Stephen Pollard and pray for his loved ones, that while they may be overcome with grief from an unspeakable tragedy, that they will find solace in Stephen's memory, his impact on this community, this community, this firehouse, and this department, and find comfort in the fact that he has been eternalized with this plaque, embodying our motto of never, ever forget. I'd like to invite John Kelly up to present to the family the UFA plaque. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to thank the Pollard family and I thank everybody for all their kind words. Uh, with that, uh, in loving memory of firefighter Stephen H. Pollard, Ladder Company 170, June 12, 2017 to January 6, 2019, an everlasting tribute for you, the ultimate sacrifice of service. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to have an opportunity to say a few words about Stephen. I was Stephen's captain for close to 14 months. It was an honor to for him to represent Canarsie. Like people were saying before, we, um, myself and my fellow officers, recognized the, uh, the greatness in Stephen. Stephen was, we, we like to say he was a good firefighter on his way to becoming a great firefighter. He was gonna be a leader in the firehouse. I've been, I've been very fortunate, I've been here for 15 years and we've had a lot of leaders, not just officers but firemen that are leaders in the firehouse. Makes my job as a boss a lot easier. And uh, you know, we always felt that he would be the guy to be leading the probies on the, the next drill and you know, as people shared, he didn't really have much to say. He was very quiet. Every once in a while, he would give you a nod, a little smile. He had that infectious smile, great smile. But I know sometime around the holidays, he started talking about his girlfriend. And uh, like he just lit up. You could see, like he didn't say much about anything, but he, he talked about Brianna. And uh, guys were really happy for him. Steven was the guy that everybody wanted to be around. Um, you know, um, Stephen was many things. He was a son, he was a brother, he was an uncle, he was a brother-in-law, he was a cousin. You know, most importantly to me, he was a hero. And I'd like to take a moment, I'd ask everybody to stand, and let's give him a standing ovation, which he well deserves. <laughs> Thank you. You can all sit down. In closing, I'd just like to say there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about Stephen and what could have been done differently. I know I can't go back, but forever he'll always be in my heart, always be in my mind. You know, 
they always say that we're all replaceable. Stephen's never going to be replaceable in Canarsie. The Pollock family will never be replaced in Canarsie. They'll always be part of our family. And um, I just want to make sure you understand that you'll always be part of the family. And I thank everybody for being here today. With that, I'm going to invite up our next speaker, Fire to Fire to Timmy Klein, one of his best friends here in the firehouse. Thanks, Scott. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Timmy Klein. I'm a member of Canarsie's Bravest. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today, especially Steve's parents, Janet, Ray, Steve, Nicole, Brianna, and Peg, Fedeli all the Fedelisi and Pollitts here, and obviously uh, the rest of the friends and family uh, that are able to join us today on this special day honoring Steve. Also, the mayor, Commissioner Nigro, Chief Sudnik, and the rest of the dignitaries on the stage. Uh, we'd also like to thank the members of the 5A Battalion for their support over this past year, whether it was helping get us tours covered, giving us rides to the messenger van, and any other favors they did for us. We're very grateful for everything. Uh, I'd also like to give a special shout out to the ceremonial unit led by Joe LaPointe. Every event and function they are involved in is run to perfection and shouldn't be overlooked. Uh, so the other day, uh, while I was writing some words to say today, uh, I had some country music playing in the background. And uh, this song particularly stuck out to me regarding this past year and what we've gone through. Uh, it's called Hold On, Hold On by Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah, that group's back together in case you guys didn't know. Uh, a verse that jumped out to me was, uh, we gotta hold on, we gotta hold on. There ain't nothing that a little love can't get us through. We gotta hold on when it feels like hope is gone. There is a remedy for you and me. We gotta hold on to each other. A lot has taken place this past year since Steve passed, and many of us have participated in events honoring him, which have included Sugar Bowl fundraiser, Memorial Days, FDNY hockey game, Mets game, St. John's game, Big East tournament, Belmont race, 9-11 stair climb, buff shows, and I'm sure I'm leaving out so many other things. But uh, I'd say the thing that's gotten us through this past year in being able to get, uh, and being involved in these events was each other, and the fact that together we want to keep loving and representing Steve and his memory the best way we could. Captain America, silent hero, gentle giant, an officer's dream. Those are just a few names that have been used to describe the person Steve was. He may have been only with us for a year and a half, but he left a lasting impression on everyone here in Canarsie. It may not have been through his words, as we all know, he was a man of a few, but more importantly, by how he carried himself and his willingness to learn the job. We could all see his passion and love for the fire department, which was instilled in him by his father, Ray, and brother, Ray. We, he inspired us all. Uh, I'd like to thank again Steve's parents, family, friends, and Brianna as well. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of events and things that needed to be organized and planned for Steve this past year, and rightfully so. Steve deserved each and every honor that was given to him. We appreciated their, we appreciated their help with all that needed to be done. You were all such genuinely caring and loving people, and as we've said, Time and time again, our door here is always open and, you, and will be for all of you if you ever need anything. Canarsie has a great reputation in history, as you can see now by the beautiful memorial wall and the plaque. Steve will forever be remembered here and we will do our very best to pass along Steve's great memory to the future of Canarsie, just like the former and present, present members who worked with the 18 members who passed on December 18, 1998 did with us. Uh, I do have a bone to pick with Steve, though. Uh, I'm usually a Bud Light or a BL smoothie guy, but uh, as many of us know, Steve loved his Budweiser's. So this past year, I've had my fair share of Bud heavies, and uh, therefore I've had a few hangovers, gained a couple pounds because of it. But I've enjoyed each and every encounter with Steve's friends, the Marine Park crew, whenever I, run, whenever I would run into them. They've taken me in as one of their own. Whether or not that's a good or bad thing is still be determined. But I'm honored by that. Every day we were reminded of Steve and what took place on January 6, 2019. Uh, we know Steve was doing what any one of us would have done, which is why he will always be remembered in Canarsie and the FDNY as a hero. But with that being said, it still doesn't ease the pain of his loss. Having this wall and plaque here will be another constant reminder for all of us, keeping his gentle, loving, kind, and passionate FDNY spirit alive forever. We pushed through the best we can this year, and we will continue to do so. And like Hootie said, there ain't nothing that a little love can't get us through. Stevie, you are loved. Thank you all, and God bless.
Thanks, Timmy. Great job. Thank you. Next, I'd like to invite up Ray Pollard, Jr., Stephen's brother, to say a few words. As most of you know, my brother was a man of very few words, so I'm going to keep it short and honor him. I'd just like to thank everybody for coming today. <clears throat> On behalf of my family, I'd like to thank all of I'd like to thank all of Steve's friends and our family for helping us out through this last year. It's been tough for us. And I'd like to thank all the members, officers and members of Canarsie's Bravest for helping to remember him now and in the future. Thank you. We're going to now commence with the dedication of, of the plaque. Please remove the veil from the plaque. The plaque reads, dedicated to the memory of firefighter Stephen H. Pollard, Ladder Company 170, who made the supreme sacrifice while in the performance of duty, operating at Brooklyn Box 8628, January 6, 2019. Detail, Heavenly Father, we ask you to send your blessing on this plaque, which has been made by human hands, but has been sacred by the memory and the life of Stephen Pollard. As this plaque hangs in his firehouse, let us serve as a reminder to all firefighters who come here to work here that they must follow the spirit and the example of Stephen in the performance of their duties. Let it also serve as a reminder to all the members of this community. There are many firefighters like Stephen who come here day in and day out, dedicated to saving their lives and their properties. We ask it to keep them all true to their calling, keep them committed, keep them compassionate and generous. Heavenly Father, bless all firefighters who are working. Help them always to live out their, their commitment, to live out the spirit of this department, and to continue living their, their life bravely as Stephen did. Bless Stephen's family and all who are present with us today. And we ask this as your loving children. Amen.
We've been watching a news conference at Ladder Company 170 Firehouse in Canarsie, Brooklyn. That's where 30-year-old firefighter Stephen Pollard worked before making the ultimate sacrifice one year ago today. Pollard slipped through a three-foot gap in the Mill Basin Bridge while responding to an accident falling more than 50 feet to his death. Officials say he was trying to say, save two people who were trapped in the wreckage of that crash. And he was on the job only about a year and a half. At Pollard's funeral, hundreds of firefighters lined the streets and turned out to show support for the late hero and his family. Pollard comes from a family of first responders. His father, now retired, served in the FDNY for more than 30 years, and his brother, who we heard from today, has been a New York City firefighter for more than a decade. His emotional family among those honoring Pollard at the plaque dedication ceremony this morning. The plaque, a symbol of his sacrifice and a reminder to never forget. Today, FDNY Commissioner Daniel Nigro described Pollard as professional, smart, determined, humble, and above all, brave. Everything the FDNY looks for in a firefighter, a job he was born to do. Right now, we're taking a quick break. We'll be right back here on CBSN New York.